Praise God. Welcome to the second segment of our discussion topic why you should never mock a man of God. Amen. In case you skip the first part, please, I'd like you to um, look for it and watch the first part of this message. You know, before I proceed, something happened the last time I ministered, not today, not tonight. Um, I tried to, you know, kind of uh, make a reference to the church that invited me to Uganda in 2019, the first time I went to that beautiful country in East Africa. And I forgot the, the name of the church, like the abbreviation, you know. And after the ministration, my wife was like, how could you forget CDMI? How could you forget the name? How? It's important. You know, I was like, <laughs> I had no explanation because, you know, when I speak, when I preach, I don't, it's not a prepared message. So I wasn't even thinking I was going to make mention of the church at that time. So it just occurred to me, I have to, you know, um, kind of uh, make reference to it. You know, it's, it's a beautiful church. It's, it's a wonderful place. And if you are in Uganda, I would encourage you to visit the church. The last time I visited was the church was in Koko. Let me not make another mistake. Koko uh, is in Kampala, but I love the name of Kololo. The church was in Kololo. Yeah, yes, there's a place called Kololo. You know, in, in Africa, we have beautiful names like that. So if you are, if you are in the area, go and worship you will love the place um the man of the, the, the senior pastor there is a is a man of god i have so much love and respect for him and his family so i believe i just want to clear the air because my wife i always call her my judge you know she always come after me and say oh you didn't do this you didn't do that so but uh, and i couldn't even explain to her better but i know she now understands that when you are under the unction of the holy spirit you are just a servant. He put words into your mouth and you speak. And as a human being, you're also subject to human errors. Praise God. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> I was sharing why you shouldn't mock a man of God. And it's very important that I promise to end it with a real life story of what happened. And I'm going to choose one story among so many stories. Because sometimes when people go to church to pray, their problem is irreversible. There are some problems that prayers can help you. No matter how you pray, you need restitution. And you need to ask yourself, examine yourself, what did I do wrong? You mock a man of God. The way God disciplines his servants is different from how he disciplines us. I always tell my wife this, and every, my mentees, the congregants, any, wherever I go to preach, if I see a man of God committing sin, if I see him committing sin, I won't judge him. I will just remove my face and go. I can only rebuke, but I will not judge him. I can only rebuke him for doing that, but I will not use it to make subject of my ministration. I've never come on online or in person to preach using what a man of God did. Never. I can't do that. I can't. So when I preach, whenever I preach, I don't have anybody in mind when I'm making my reference that is a man of God. I can't. I preach the message of salvation. And I preach to liberate someone from sin or from perishing. So that's the essence of this. Because I just want you to know. Sometimes you fast so long, you do so much, you pray, pray, pray. But it's as if it's not answered. You hurt God. You hurt God by mocking his servant. And the worst hurting you can do is when you mock that person without the person knowing. That's the worst of it. There's this story I'm going to share. I visited a particular church. You know, I've been to... East Africa twice and this time around I visited a particular church that same beautiful country in Uganda and when I went there <coughs> the church the date I believe it was a day um, to my departure I was invited to have a meeting with the youth of the church there is a program they call the destiny altar the destiny altar is where the youths you know, it's meant for the youth. And you know I love youth so much. Anything that has to do with the, the youth, I am interested. I love to do it. So they invited me to talk to the youth. And a lot of people came because they saw the power of God on a Sunday service. I think that was on a Thursday. I can't remember exactly. As I got there, it's a midnight prayer meeting. 
as I got there, I, I knelt down to pray. <clears throat> as I knelt down to pray, the, the ministry angel, you know, ministered to me and said, the Lord ministered to me immediately and said, um, wait a minute, when you stand up, look back, there are two young beautiful ladies. I would like you to invite them over before you leave. I was like, instead of praying, I was already communicating. I said, how? How can I invite these people to come over? To cut the long story short, I stood up. And as soon as I turned, as the Lord commanded me, I saw these beautiful young ladies looking directly at me. And the moment they looked at me, they removed their face. And I, said, I caught their attention. I said, OK, how? These are, like, these are not kids. These are like adults. And the Lord said, invite them over. I said, OK. So after the prayer meeting everything, I asked someone if someone knows these young people that I want to see them. And imagine me inviting them over to my hotel. <laughs> you know, sometimes the ways of the Lord is so funny. Imagine inviting them over to my hotel. Then I told um, the, 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 the young man <coughs> that was... Uh, kind of taking me around. I said, bring this, to, do you know this lady? They said, yes. I said, okay, bring them over to me. I'd like to see them. I have no reason why I want to see them. I don't, I, I had no idea why, why the Lord wanted me to meet with them. So um, the next day, they came. One person, the other person couldn't call. She was so afraid because she saw the prophetic anointing. She saw what God happened. So she was so scared. And the, the older lady came, and that older one was to travel out of the country, uh, from Uganda to North America, close to my country in the U.S. She was to travel there. But there was a problem. The Lord told me there was a problem. I still didn't know why. And she came. I had nothing to tell her, but she came. I took, I asked them to go and eat in the hotel where I was staying, a very big hotel. Go and eat. The people that brought them, I still have no reason for inviting this young lady. I don't know why. And uh, the Lord said, give her money to go and do her paperwork. I, gave, I asked, started having interactions with her. She needed some money. There was no money. I gave her the money. She cried. I still don't know why God was, what God wanted me to do. God said, okay, when he wanted to speak to Moses, he used the bush that was on fire but not consumed to attract Moses. I want to liberate this family. I'm using the daughters standing in the gap to save their mother from dying. I said, well, how? Okay. I'm using these daughters. From all indication, I see that this message might go into a third part because I have to finish this testimony. It's already getting into nine minutes, and I don't want it to exceed ten minutes. So it's, I'm using this young lady to stand in a gap for the mother. Give them the money. If you don't do this, she won't travel. There have been so many roadblocks. She came to pray, but she's not moving nowhere. She and her sister are citizens of the foreign country. They were supposed to travel, but they can't. And their mother will die. I said, okay, so interesting. And I was leaving. So I talked to that lady. I said, I need to see your mother. The mother was not around. The mother, sister, I think, had accident or something. So she was in the hospital taking care of the sister. And uh, so she wasn't around. I didn't see the mom. Even till now, I haven't seen the mom. So I said, I need to see your mom. You know, so she said, OK, she will connect her mom to speak with me. I said, no, I will go to the hospital to see her mom. And the Lord said, no, you have to go back to America. I will connect you, I will link you up with the mother because I don't want the children to witness what I'm about to tell you and what I'm about to ask you to do. I want you to deal with it. I've used the children. The children stood just as the burning bush in the time of Moses. They attract, they, I use these children to bring you closer to the family. Now I want to do what I want to do through you. And after that thing is done, cut it off. Let them go that you have done your work. I, I just want to tell you the effect of when you speak against a man of God. I'm going to take this to third 